Hi everybody, Eric Alexander at Tecton Design here. A few weeks back, I laid out evidence for what I believed was how hi-fi and audiophile loudspeakers lost their mojo. And I want to continue in that theme. So tomorrow will be the first day of the show in Los Angeles, one of the larger, more attended audiophile shows. And for those of you that catch this video and go to this show, I have a, a bit of a test for you. One of the things I realized upwards of 30 years ago when I attended my first audiophile show is as you go from room to room, and that's been a habit that I've had, every trade show that I've ever gone to, I literally hit every room. I wanna to listen to what my competition's doing. I wanna hear what every, what's potentially out there. But of all of the inconsistencies that go from room to room, the most obvious to me is the bass response. And I'm not talking about room modes and nodes. I'm talking about the loudspeaker design itself. The gamut <clears throat> of inconsistencies between bass response from loudspeaker model to loudspeaker model should be frankly alarming. And I have some theories. The first theory that I wanna share with you is that a lot of people designing this stuff don't know what live music sounds like. And so what am I trying to convey here? I'm, I'm really trying to convey that loudspeakers the bass response is everywhere. It's all over the charts. I've listened to bass response that is so tight and unrealistic that it wouldn't even qualify as a product in my, in my opinion. And then there's the, the approach of loudspeaker design that the cabinet is perfectly inert, whether it's made from concrete or very thick walled aluminum, it's, it's inert. And then if we were to pull that driver out of the inside, that <clears throat> you would discover that it's got damping everywhere in it. There's not a, there's not a bare surface inside of that. And <clears throat> I wanna share what, how I, think it, how I think it should be done. One of the next videos I wanna produce is we're gonna bring in a, a speaker from the 1980s and we are going to take that thing apart. In other words, we're gonna do an autopsy and I'm gonna show you how loudspeaker engineers did this stuff in the 80s. We're not gonna, it's just gonna be raw. We'll just take it apart and we'll talk about how it was done and why it was done in that format. But for today, what I wanna hone in on is that loudspeakers should be perfectly tuned. They have to have a perfect sound. Now, what's my baseline reference? First thing I wanna say is that loudspeaker design, and trust me when I say this, Floyd Tool isn't gonna talk about this, and Floyd Tool, if you're watching, you don't have all the truth in audio, and neither do I. There's not one single person on earth. But I learned a good lesson from <clears throat> Pat Brown, Sanad Khan, and um, taking his training program about 25 years ago. And one of the first topics that was discussed was that this is a science and this is an art. And I must agree. I absolutely believe that it's a science and absolutely know that it's an art. I'll give you an example. There's, there's 10 really good brands of grand pianos. That are that are available to anybody um, and all of these pianos they're going to be tuned perfectly um, concert a 440 hit that hit that note and they're all going to resemble and convey that 440 note but they do not all sound the same they do not and how come most of the world's greatest piano players want to play a steinway and 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 some of them want to play a yamaha so Yamaha um, and Steinway must have some secret knowledge or some wisdom, or they might be better at the art. And so that's what I'm trying to say here about loudspeakers as well. 
So for me, my experience in the art side goes back to literally sixth grade when I was personally tutored by the band teacher at the junior high school. And then for three straight years, I had band in junior high school and I had band in high school as well. I picked up the drums at age 12. So for three straight years, uh, five days a week, I had band class and I'm sitting in the orchestra, so to speak. So I got to know what everything sounded like from the concert bass drum to the flute to the, I mean, it. this stuff was all right next to me. So I got to know what it sounded like. And then later on, as I got into bands that toured around that were rock and country music bands, then I got familiar with the garage band sound and the concert sound and things like that. And then that became studios and, and, and here's where we're at today. So I'd like to say that I know what a stand-up bass sounds like in a jazz trio because I've heard it. I know exactly what it sounds like. I'd like to say I know what my bass drum sounds like when I kick it hard. I know what the concert bass sounds like. I know what the timpani sounds like and all of and the tuba. I mean, I sat, I was in the brass section for a few years and I know what the tuba sounds like because it was behind me for days. And so with that thought, what I'm trying to convey is that a good loudspeaker is exceptionally tuned. And I'm not talking about just how, whether it's sealed or ported or open baffle or whatever it is, it has to be precisely tuned. And that was one of the things that I think <clears throat> really helped me in the, in the early days. So learning how to tune this stuff. Every now and then I get a phone call from a client that says, Hey Eric, I just looked through the porthole or I just pulled the woofer out and, and I noticed a section of the cabinet that didn't have any damping on it. Guys, that's perfectly acceptable. It was taught years ago and that's how it needs to be done. You can put too much damping material in an enclosure. You can put too little, and that's how this is done. You can tune a loudspeaker to a gamut of frequencies, too low, too high, um, things like that. But the one thing that I need to convey is that I think that we get the sound right. When I go to a trade show, and, and, and I'll tell you this, I've had this happen more than once. And keep in mind, we're selling speakers that are under $10,000. This is kind of laughable when you think about it. We offer products under $10,000 and I know, not being biased, I know I've walked away from trade shows and believed that we had the top three sound of the entire show. Millions and millions of dollars of audio there. And I'm walking away knowing and believing that we had top three, top shelf type presentations. And so bass, again, can be all over the charts. I'll, sh I'll share another couple of things. These really expensive inert cabinets, I, I don't think they have the corner on truth in audio when it comes to how bass sounds. Um, it's intriguing, but it's not real. It's, it's not anything blindfold me, sit me down, convince me that there really is um, a Grammy nominated bass player in front of me four feet. They don't do it. They just don't do it. And the other one, and I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, but it, <clears throat> you notice that we haven't offered an open baffle product. Open baffles are all the rage right now, but I will say this. There is an element to open baffle design that does not ring true. And when I say does not ring true, I'm talking about, I put my musical instrument hat on and I know what all of these instruments sound like. And there is an element to open baffle that does not ring true. That's why we offered the open baffle hybrid. That rings true. When I hear bass coming out of that open baffle hybrid, my open baffle Sigma, and, and that thing rings true. It sounds right. We get the bass right. So I have a suggestion and I, I might've mentioned this in another video, but if you fancy yourself as an audiophile, you've got to get to know intimately well what real musical instrument sounds like. I, I'll share one of the funniest, fu it's, this is just, this is just laughable. So Double Impact, a wildly popular speak, wildly popular speaker. It, it, it's, it sounds incredible for $3,000. And 
<clears throat> a few years back, I sold a pair to a guy. <clears throat> and after a few days, he calls me on the phone. And this guy knew every audiophile attribute that I've ever heard. So for me, I want to quantify. I want to measure it. I want to talk about it in, in the realm of physics. I don't like silky, warm, smooth, fluid, um, sound, sound stage this, sound stage that. Nope, I want to quantify it. Is it related to the polar response? Is it related to the bass tuning? Um, what, are we, what are we actually hearing here? So he laid out all these audio attributes and he's like, well, Eric, you got a good speaker. Now, how good is the double impact? Uh, two and a half years, one refund. That's how good that speaker is. I won't tell you how many we've sold because I don't want to tip my hand in my competition, but it's a lot. And two and a half years with one refund tells me we only cater to audiophiles, folks. We're not a mainstream company. So the most finicky, persnickety listeners on planet Earth in two and a half years, one refund. We get it right. We absolutely nail it. And so this guy says, well, you know, I like your speaker, but um, uh, I'm just not feeling the love. And then he conveys all these audiophile attributes. And after about 15 minutes of discussion, I finally just had this light bulb moment. And I said, okay, when's the last time you heard live music? When is the last time you went to a jazz club? the orchestra, the symphony. When is the last time? I'm not talking about a John Bon Jovi concert because there's no fidelity there. But when was the last time you heard, went, purposely went out to hear live music? And there was a long period of silence. And then the man admitted to me that it had been 19 years. Okay. And I told him at that point, I said, there's your problem. Your baseline reference is gone. You wouldn't know what good sound is and should sound like if it jumped up and bit you on the backside. And guess what? I know there's others that, there's others designing this stuff. There's others designing this stuff that have that same problem. That's why when I go to a trade show and I hear bass and it's not right, it's because they don't have a baseline reference. So my challenge to you, anybody that wants to fancy themselves as an, audio, as an audiophile, get in your car, drive to the high school and talk to the band director and ask if you can stand next to him for a couple of classes so that you learn what this stuff really sounds like. Maybe um, there's other alternatives. Find the up and coming garage band and say, hey, can I just listen to you guys practice for a while? There's a lot of neat ways to introduce yourself into the real music and what it really sounds like so that when you go home, see my company's based on this. This is the philosophy that this company was founded on is that we want our speakers to sound like real music, not an ad campaign, not pretend stuff in a, in a, in a midnight uh, promotional video. This, this, does it sound like live? No, I'm talking there, there is a, there is, there is an element here that it just has to be convincing to the human ear. So my challenge to you is go to a trade show, listen to the bass. And when you go, make sure that you know what real music sounds like so that you can get it right and not make a bad decision. And I think we get it right. So um, with all that said, I want to introduce a new model. This is the, um, the Epic 15. And we're doing some stuff that's really special with this speaker. Um, big 15 inch woofer. And guess what folks? It's tuned, it's designed. This thing's optimum. This thing's really a fantastic speaker and it digs deep. With that 15 inch woofer, it absolutely did, digs deep and it rings true. The bass, you will love the bass out of this speaker. And then this gets a little, this is really cool because nobody else is doing this. So our patented array, these are literally kicking in at 190 Hertz. So we're doing nothing but the deep bass and the bass with our 15 inch woofer. And we transition to these at 190 and the, the, the crossover frequency is 320 Hertz. So we're doing all of the work, excluding the bass out of these little magic drivers that are so precise. So linear, so accurate, a third of a gram, 1.8 grams of total moving mass. The speaker's 95 dB. You will love it. They're $2,400 a pair. And this is our newest 
most exciting speaker model that we have. And I think that's it for today. So thanks for watching.